into the cloud. So, um, so I'm right here um, going to be starting this overview of library services and sort of a demonstration of library services for graduate students. I'm going to share my screen right now um, so we can get started. So um, the first thing I want to point out is who I am. I'm Dawn M. Salem, the Director of Library Services, and um, Iman, you and I have emailed before, but uh, anybody else who may see this in the future, you can contact me at dawn.msalim at salve.edu or just by Googling Dawn Salve Library and you'll find my email address. Um, so what we're going to work on today is how to, um, we're going to talk about library services that are available to grad students, and then some of the search tools that are available through Salve Regina's library for library research. And then we're going to talk a bit about RefWorks. Iman, did we already talk about RefWorks in our other session? We did. Okay, I'll do I'll do a little helpful. more if you have used it. Um, I'd be interested in your experiences with it, especially if you have and have had any challenges. Um, and let's see. So services that we offer, um, our librarians are uh, have we understand that grad students have special considerations and especially that. Um, they may be worldwide and dealing with time differences as, as well. So we are happy to schedule um, online consults with the graduate students. We do use Zoom um, it, and actually Zoom is really great because we can um, screen share and we can hand over the, uh, the control to the grad student and they, you can get muscle memory using our tools. Um, the other thing is that um, we, we work with grad students at all stages of the research process. So maybe when you're just starting out and trying to refine your question to, you know, to figure out like what language to use to describe your topic, or it could go on to that, even to the exhaustive research that you're trying to do when you're really digging, you're really dug into your dissertation and are trying to make sure you have everything that has been uh, written about your topic. Um, we also have the library chat, which I'll show on our um, web page. And um, interlibrary loan of Salve or Helen books. Um, we send these books. Um, Helen is our library consortium of um, in Rhode Island, um, of schools in Rhode Island and Wheaton and Massachusetts. But when we send the books, we recommend that if it, that it's uh, on the in the continental US because we send it book rate, which is through the US Postal Service. And um, that's a very slow method of transport. So um, it's likely that the book will get there way past its due date if uh, you do that. But our interlibrary loan of articles is very effective. We have people working seven days a week to get to process those requests. Um, and we have a lot of, of electronic subscription resources many, many more ebooks than we have books. We have about 140,000 print books and we have uh, 600,000 ebook titles. Um, we have liaisons who work with each discipline. So we get some experience with the types of um, research that is being done in those disciplines, the subject matter of the classes. Um, and um, you can see the language we use as liaison. So you could Google um, Salve Regina liaison librarian and you get to our um, liaison page. Um, and these are our main article databases at Salve. So JSTOR and EBSCOhost, um, they have different types. They're strong in different types of material and they have different strengths in terms of how you can use them to search. So JSTOR has what we call back files. So it's more, um, it's more effective in the humanities where really up-to-date currency is not as important. And it's also um, because most of the time it's, we have what we call a, a five, it's usually a five or 10 year rolling embargo. So the journals tend to be, five to 10 years older. 
this works fine with if you're exploring philosophical issues or that kind of thing. Um, and again, in the humanities, it's very strong. Um, JSTOR also has a very strong collection of right up to the present 2022 um, ebooks. So um, this, these are from university presses and um, it's a very strong collection. So this is a great place to go for um, books from all areas. Um, and you can also search our catalog, our book catalog and get our JSTOR ebook and collections. JSTOR's search algorithm is Google-like. So you can put a lot of words in JSTOR and it will search the full text of its articles in order to find um, what you're looking for. So this is very different than our EBSCO database where our EBSCO database searches the fields, the title, author, and abstract fields and journal title. Um, and so what that means is since it's not searching the full text of the article, you have to be very picky what words you put in. So it's good if you're having trouble in EBSCO, it may be that you don't have the language that scholars use to describe your topic. And that's when I suggest often trying out Google Scholar, which is another tool. EBSCO is very strong in that it it does indexing and offers um, subject headings for all of its resources. So um, that can be a very powerful efficiency tip if you find a subject heading that describes your topic exactly. And we'll go into this and talk uh, about that more. Um, our book catalog can be configured to search books worldwide. Um, so you can um, see, it's a good way to see what's out there on your topic, even if you don't have access to those books and there's ways to configure it. So if you do have access to, like if you could go physically to a university library near you, um, our book catalog can show you, you can do a sort by zip code and it will show you that. Um, all of our eBooks are in our book catalog, regardless of whether they're in JSTOR, EBSCO, ProQuest, wherever. Um, and RefWorks is a bibliographic citation manager, much like Mendeley, if you're familiar with that, or Zotero. Um, the library subscribes to it. It's uh, a very useful tool, especially for people who are doing a lot of paper writing or dissertation writing. Um, and it's very easy to get the data um, out of any of our tools or Google Scholar into RefWorks, and we'll show that when we go through. Um, Google Scholar is also an excellent tool um, and it can be configured uh, so that if you have it tied to your account that it will show you um, your Salve, it'll, if you, tell, you can tell it that you're affiliated with Salve and any other institutions you may be affiliated with such as say the Naval War College. And um, it will show, allow, it'll link directly through to Salve or other resources um, and prompt you to log in if, if need be to access them. Um, and there are some other really interesting tools that you can use in Google Scholar, which we can talk about. So with that, I think what we'll do is go into the library's homepage. Um, and I, We'll just open this right here. To get to the library's homepage, I just Google Salve Library. Um, that's the quickest probably. We go, here's what it looks like. This is the chat that I was talking about before. Um, you can type a message in there and a librarian will get back to you. It's staff from 10 to seven on um, Monday through um, Thursday and 12 to four on Friday and on Sundays from one to seven. So, um, and and this is how you can meet with a librarian right here. This um, this link right here will take you to our um, reference librarians. I'm on here. You can see that I had um, I have two slots tomorrow at nine and eleven a.m. Um, so if you chose that, then it would it would make an automatic appointment, and then I could send you a Zoom link. Um, I am also available on Monday nights, although um, this doesn't show up because I, I'm booked at the reference desk uh, just to make sure that nobody tries to book a meeting with me in there. But all of the librarians also work um, in the evening. So if you need an evening appointment, we can do that. And we can also do earlier appointments. So 
please reach out to us if you need um, an appointment outside of work hours, usual work hours. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the catalog. And um, Iman, I don't know if you mind if we uh, do use some of your uh, your topic for um, for our searching. Would that be all right? Yes, absolutely. All right, great. So Iman shared with me before we started recording that he's interested in uh, his dissertation topic is focused on maritime security concerns, especially related to the Strait of Hormuz. And um, so I'm going to just, it, our book catalog, it's a good idea to use like very limited and specific keywords. So I'm actually going to do maritime security and not even put the um, straight in there and see what comes up. So right now, this is our catalog and you'll see that um, this is, it's on the left-hand side, it's really only searching Helen Libraries and Salve Regina University. So um, this, these results are only, are the books that are available at these. Um, also, it's including print, so we may want to click only on ebook if you're not in Rhode Island. And then the other thing we might choose to do is change it to libraries worldwide if we want to do an exhaustive search. Um, but we'll see what we have first. So this is a 2008 book, which um, may be a bit old for your purposes. I'm not sure, but um, it also, you may be way past an introduction to this. So this is an ebook um, that is from 2020. So I'm just going to click on this and see what happens. It's taking us into um, free. Uh, ProQuest eBook Central. This is a 2020 book. The full title is Maritime Security, um, Counterterrorism Lessons from My Maritime Piracy and Narcotics Interdiction. And a few factors. So this is one of our eBook um, vendors. Um, if we wanted to, we could look, we could scroll down here and see a bit more about what subsections and subsections are in the book. Um, so you can see what is actually covered. Um, if you're interested in this chapter, for example, you could download this PDF um, and see what is in it. Um, if you wanted to, uh, and here we go. So this is, this is an edited volume. So um, there are um, different authors who are all giving um, kind of information about this. And if we were looking, uh, if we were looking for, say, a particular phrase in here, we could do control or command F and try, say, maybe it mentions Hormuz. And in fact, it does three times. We can see right here. So this is the first, um, the first mention of the Strait of Hormuz. And then if we go down, that's the second one. Um, and then this is a um, this is a, a link to another article that talks about a particular attack uh, in the Strait of Hormuz. So um, just to recap, this is ProQuest. Uh, this is the ProQuest ebook platform. Um, if you want, you can down, you can see the table of contents and download PDFs. And then if you want to look for a particular thing to see if this chapter is really relevant to you, you can do control or option F for the word that you're looking for. If we click on read online, um, you can actually see the book there and just sort of browse through it. Um, it will, you can just browse through each page or again, see the table of contents on the left-hand side here. These across the top, this download button um, requires that, you, of the full book, requires that you have a ProQuest account. So all, pretty much all of our ebook vendors, well, at least EBSCO and Chase uh, and uh, ProQuest require that you have a um, account with them, which you would just click on sign in and create an account if you want to download the entire book. 
um, but you can also download chapters, several chapters. Um, and over here, it'll tell you how much you can. It says there's no print copy or download restrictions on this title. So you could actually download each chapter if you wanted. Right here, it tells us this. Sometimes it'll say you can only do 100 pages. The, the uh, publisher will put that restriction on it. But in this case, you can do that. This also allows you to cite. So often if you're looking for citation, there's these little quotes here. You click on that, you can get the citation. And you can also export to RefWorks right here. And I think I might actually show you how to export uh, a little bit more about RefWorks. Oh, if we're choosing MLA, you might be using Chicago instead. But if we export to RefWorks, um, this just came up and I'm not sure what has gone wrong, but I just tell it to send anyway. Um, it's opening in my RefWorks account. This is what my RefWorks account looks like. Um, I have created folders for um, the different purposes that I use RefWorks for. Um, and I'll show you, uh, you get to RefWorks by going to databases A to Z and R for RefWorks. And you can create your own RefWorks account that way. Um, if, if I was logged out, it would prompt me to create an account. Um, again, it was library databases A to Z, R for RefWorks and RefWorks. But if you've already created a, an account, you can export most of the citation options look like something like this, or they say cite or share. Um, and then you can create folders. See how that little plus add folders. So if I was doing research, I've taken a couple INR classes, I might say, okay, I want this to go in my INR 512 folder and I'm gonna import it. And the beauty of RefWorks, and then it's, it's done, it's very easy. The beauty of RefWorks is that if you have a, a project you're working on and you put all of the, um, all of the references in one place, you can select them all and click on create bibliography, choose the citation style you prefer, and it just does um, all of the citations right there for you, which is quite nice. In this case, it's taking a bit longer than usual. Usually they just pop up, but um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep going with this. So that was one example of an ebook. The other thing um, that you can do through our catalog, again, this site button right here, and then export to RefWorks, that's one thing. The other thing is if we click on the book title, it gives us subjects. And um, these are the subject headings. And if we click on one of these, um, you it'll redo our search for those subject headings. So a librarian has read that book and said, this is exactly about these topics. And this can be a really strong efficiency tip if you um, are interested in, like if you find a subject heading that's really right on for your topic, it can be terrific. Um, and so this one is counter terror. I think that's the one we just clicked on. Um, this is more for shipping. Um, so there may be different angles to go at if you're looking at shipping versus military um, and another container security. Um, and so this is just sort of a little, little, a little, uh, um, taste of what the catalog is able to work with. So we'll go back to the library homepage again. We just looked at the catalog. The next, uh, tool I'd like to show you is the articles tab. So if you, it, the library always defaults to the book tab, but if you click over to the article tab, this search box is looking in um, EBSCO databases. So um, I'm going to try Iman's search again. I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do maritime security. And because I'm searching for articles, articles more than books will laser in on a particular topic. So I am actually going to add Hormuz 
to this and books cover have a bigger, a wider, usually sort of like a broader view of a thing. And our, um, our search, our catalog, if I had added Hormuz, I might not have had much luck, but I'm going to add Hormuz to this search and see what happens. This is only searching our EBSCOhost databases. Um, and, and just so you know, we're sort of an EBSCO shop. So if you look at all the databases we're searching right now, it's a very interdisciplinary um, bunch of different databases. Um, and there may be art, like journals that are related to this topic in many different databases. So um, tens of thousands of journals in here, represented in here. Um, I'll just show that, close that up. So we received 68 results. Um, and um, here's an example. So um, Iman, can I just ask uh, related to this, are you looking for some specific aspect of um, like through like a particular lens when you're talking about security in the Strait of Hormuz? Yeah, so through the lens of US foreign policy in relation with the couple of the countries that are the key players in the area. So you, UAE, uh, maybe? I would, I would say um, more so Iran and uh, maybe Bahrain and Qatar. UAE, yes, that would be like a little bit down on the list. Okay. Okay, interesting. Thank you. And um, is are you interested in both shipping and military, or is it sort of mil is that all like tied in together? It's kind of all tied in together uh, okay. because there's a lot of shipping, but none of it can happen without the military safe, like allowing for safe passage. So. I see. Yes. All right. Okay. Excellent. So this article right here could be interesting. Um, and I'll just point out a few things about it. Um, so I'm looking at maritime piracy in the Strait of Hormuz. And um, this is in an academic journal, EBSCO's telling us. Um, this is from May 2020, not, not too old. It's in the journal Energy Policy, which will tell you a little bit of the like lens that is being looked through with relation to this topic. Um, and it right here, we can see that it says find full text, request this item. If the PDF is directly available in our EBSCO database, it'll say PDF full text like this article above. Um, but if it says find full text, clicking on that link will uh, prompt it to look in all of our other databases and see if it's available there. And if not, to request, it'll take you to a request via interlibrary, offer you to go to a request through interlibrary loan page. If we click on this title, we can get some more information such as this abstract. Um, so, um, this is talking about the impact of piracy attacks. Um, and it could be, useful if we're talking policy implications of this risk to global energy security. So this could be, and it's, it is talking about Bahrain and Kuwait. So um, this is a, a possible, interesting, a useful um, article. If we wanted it, we could click on find full text, request this item, and now it's going out. And it's found this article in our database, Science Direct. Um, and then you can just download the article here. Um, I actually haven't used Science Direct to export to RefWorks, but I believe if we click, oh wait, if we click on this article and click on export, it allows you to save to RefWorks, just like we saw before. So, um, so that's one thing that might happen. Um, you can also click on export in EBSCO and it allows you to direct export to RefWorks. When you hit save, it opens up a new window and brings you into RefWorks. You can put it in your folder if you're already logged in. Um, and yeah, so here's some examples. And on the left-hand side, you can see right here that EBSCO is providing you with um, the author supplied keywords, which are 
a little different than subject headings, but may give you some ideas of like how, how to refer other ways to refer to your topic. Let's go back to our results again and see what else we have. Um, we're looking at another 2020. Um, this one is a periodical from Bloomberg. Um, this may be talking about a um, something related to policy. I might add a term and do policy um, and see what happens if that changes things at all. It did. Now we only have six results. The article we just saw. And here we have, um, this is a Wall Street Journal article. Um, and this is bringing, this is telling us there's actually a journal, Maritime Policy and Management, which could be interesting. Um, that's December, 2021. Um, I'm interested in whether China has similar strategic goals um, and talking about the Belt and Road Initiative. So maybe that's useful. Um, and again, instead of subject headings, we have uh, author supplied keywords. This is interesting that we're running into that a fair amount. I'm just going to check this one. Uh, this one does have subject terms. Uh, maritime piracy is one, as well as the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. So if you were interested in looking at policy through the lens of this, um, you could do a uh, click on the United Nations Convention. Um, that's got 2000. We could do at and add terms like hormones and see what comes back. Um, now we see uh, an interesting, you know, we have a new lens. This is a legal journal. Um, and we also see some subject headings. So just some ideas of, uh, first of all, how to use subject headings to see different angles uh, on your topic. And then, um, how to, uh, if you want to click on PDF full text, that'll give you the whole article. Um, and you can export using, again, this is an export button to RefWorks. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to show you with EBSCO. Are you familiar with, have you been using EBSCO at all, uh, Iman, for this, for your research? Yes, I've used it in the past courses, you know. Um... And I have used it a little bit for my research topic, yes. But I like, well, you definitely showed me a lot more functions um, and how to use it better by especially adding like the second word on the bottom. I, I did not know that tool, so that's huge. Yeah, it's a, it, that's a great way to refine your search. Um, it's to like have, find your broad, in terms of search strategy to um, find your, like a, a subject heading that you may want to like look by scrolling through the articles, identify uh, subject headings that relate to your topic um, and then adding additional words to see where that brings you um, can be a really strong approach um, to doing that, uh, to seeing, you know, seeing new articles and new ways of looking at your topic. Um, now we're gonna give a whirl with JSTOR. Um, so, I'm in the articles tab. I'm clicking down here on JSTOR. JSTOR is our other database, the one that I said acts kind of googly. Um, so we're gonna put a bunch of words in here. We're gonna do maritime security and uh, we're going to do, um, we'll do, like I said, we can add so many things. Foreign policy, we'll add, um, uh, we'll add Hormuz because I think I might not need to put straight. Um, and I think I might add a state. So maybe I'll do Iran and see what happens. I'm just going to hit enter. Um, so we got 973 results. Um, this one is 1978. So that's a pretty old article. That's interesting. Um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna. I'm not sure how successful this search has been. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this first article, which JSTOR because it put it first, 
thinks that this is the an article that we'd really want to see. So I'm going to click on download. The 1978 significance is the Iranian revolution. So that's probably why. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Thanks for that clarification. That's probably, that is probably interesting. You know, I'm interested to see here. That, well, you probably already know this, but I'm going to do control F for Hormuz. And I see that uh, there's one result. I'm also seeing some other words, which may or may not, you, you are, you know, obviously have much more knowledge of this topic, but the term literal states um, could be a term that you may find useful at some other point. Like if you're doing a combination, that that is a phrase that um, people who are researching maritime security may use to describe those states that are like close to issues um like like the strait so i guess you know iran bahrain Qatar might be literal states maybe is that do you think that's accurate iman yes absolutely i would say those are like considered direct players excellent so so that's just just saying that um while we're doing this work there's a bunch of things we're looking at we're looking at language that scholars use to describe certain aspects because those are phrases that we maybe want to take into um, our search tools at some point um so um that's one thing but i am seeing that this article is not talking very much about Hormuz. So I'm going to, I'm going to pop out of it. And I am feeling a little bit like JSTOR maybe doesn't have, uh, is it, this search isn't as effective. So I'm going to take out some words. Um, and, and I'm, you know, if I was really, if I was doing this on my own and not in a recorded lecture, I might, you know, t check a few more articles before I did that by downloading and doing control or command F and like some other important words from my search. But um, uh, but in this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna take out some words and see what that does to my search. So I'm taking out words which usually broadens my search. Um, and now I'm seeing some interesting results. Um, this is talking about EU GCC cooperation. Uh, Gulf, what is, do you know what, I don't know what GCC is, but you might. Um, and I'm actually wondering by looking at this, if this is in another language, but we're gonna download it and see. Um, and it's not. So, we're going to do a control F for Hormoz. And it looks like that there's five results. So there may be um, a, a lot of articles. I mean, a lot of, uh, or it may be a relevant article um, for this. And also, but through the lens of, I'm interested in, I'm gonna find out what GCC is. I'll have to, I, I might end up Googling that Gulf something maybe. Um, and so this is a, um, this is just to show you some sort of search strategies for figuring it out. We put everything we wanted in the search to begin. Then we're sort of questioning whether our search was effective. We took out a few words. We do this download and control our uh, command F to see if our word, how much our word, our, our, our key phrase or word shows up. A um, few more things about, um, about JSTOR. If you want to export to RefWorks or another bibliographic citation manager, you click on site and there's this export to RefWorks option. If you're not using a bibliographic citation manager, you can copy uh, and paste right there your citation. Um, and, uh, and download is how you get to the articles. There's a bunch of options on the left here um, for limiting by date. Sometimes that is a good thing to do if you're finding a lot of, you know, you really want the most recent uh, treatment of your topic. And then if you want to look through the lens of a particular uh, discipline, 
it you can limit here um, and JSTOR has categorized the journals by discipline on the left hand side so that's another thing to do um, this is if you have a lot of results in our case we had uh, 1100 results so that could be an approach to do um, so the next thing that I'm going to try out is Google Scholar and Iman um, is there like some particular aspect of your research that has been tricky that you like some like some subject matter that is you're particularly curious about right now? Um, I think the tricky part is arguing if you know the situation in Israel foremost has been beneficial or not, and it's tricky because. Well, yeah, of course it's beneficial because it's the only way that, you know, 70% of the world's oil flows, but it might not have been beneficial because of all the drama that happens, you know? So <laughs> I don't know. does that make sense? <laughs> when you say beneficial, do you mean like how the, the key actors have been cooperating? Or how it's been functioning, you know? I mean, yeah, a lot of things happens, but still the supplies are flowing, you know, it's kind of like the Suez Canal or the Panama Canal, you know, is yeah, they are beneficial in the sense that they, they save so much time instead of going, you know, halfway around the world, you can just pass through those canals to get to where you need to go. So it's the similar situation with the Strait of Hormuz. But then at the same time, there's, there's a lot of activities that happens, you know, piracy, you know, kidnapping, you know, they blow up ships, they kill people. There's a lot of other illegal activities that takes place. And, and but the good outweighs the bad, but, you know, the tricky part is how you can one argue that overall, you know, it's been effective or no, it really hasn't been effective and we need the change in policy. Okay, so so should the pol like should the policy evolve to address these persistent problems? Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes, or just you know it's kind of like hey, we're just gonna accept the situation for what it is. You know, yeah, it's functional at with twenty percent rate of damage, for example. You know. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and just so you know. Um, what that like that questioning is like sort of modeling a reference interview so if you meet with a librarian they may like ask ask questions along those lines to sort of really zero in on what you're looking for um so now i'm in google scholar i'm about to i googled google scholar i'm going to click on google scholar and i'm just going to make this a bit bigger um, and so if you're signed in as yourself, uh, I think I'm signed in as Salve Librarian right now, um, and you go over here to this hamburger, you can get your Google uh, Scholar settings configured. Um, I'm going to click on settings. So I clicked on these three lines and then settings, and I'm going to click on library links. And so um, often uh, when I'm working with students, they may be at the Naval War College. So I've added the, I do a search for Naval War College and it'll show me all of the options for that or Salve Regina. Um, and it'll show me, Google will say, oh, do you mean this library? And then you click them and you save them. And then when we do our search, um, We'll do, we, and again, so Google Scholar, it's searching, I haven't said this, I'm not saying it again. Um, it's searching a bunch of um, uh, publisher websites, university websites, you may find senior theses, you might find, um, you may find uh, dissertations, graduate theses, and a lot of journal articles. So just be aware of what you're looking at when you're looking in here, preprints. So before they've undergone the peer review process, they might be in there. Um, so I would do um, straight of Hormuz, and then I'm gonna do um, policy. And maybe I'm particularly interested in piracy. Um, and I'm gonna hit enter. Um, and so here is a um, here is a 2020 article. Um, and I'm 
sort of talking about, uh, I'm looking at the results that have come back. Anything uh, that shows up on the left-hand side here, if you click on it, it will take you to the full text of the article. You can view this PDF by clicking on that. Um, and um, if there's a few other things that we can see in this case, Google Scholar, you can kind of judge the relative importance of the article um, by the cited by right here. So this article was written in 2020, but it already has been cited by 16 other authors, which indicates that it may be a significant article. If we click on cited by, um, we see the articles that cited it. Um, so this is Google Scholar has a really uh, interesting, uh, this is a really interesting tool because if we clicked on the, if we went and found in this article, the bibliography, this is looking at all of the scholarly discussion about this topic in the past. And then Google Scholars cited by shows you all of the scholarly discussion in the future of what of when this article was published. So it's a really great way to sort of get a feel for what's going on related to your topic in the scholarly discussion. Um, another thing is if we click on site, we can get our citations or export to RefWorks. So, um, and so that is another really easy way to get things into RefWorks. Um, I am sort of thinking um, that you may be, your topic, your subject matter may be really needing current treatment. And the scholarly publication, the scholarly information cycle for, uh, is, is kind of long. So like to get a peer reviewed article written and peer reviewed and published takes a long time. So we've only been looking at, at scholarly sort of scholarly um, peer reviewed sources right now. And I'm thinking that we may want to look at a different one, different topic uh, or uh, information source. So for certain, this is where a librarian might use their spidey sense based on your topic about what kind of tools are most useful. Um, I think Harvard Think Tank search is one that I really love. And uh, if I do a search for Harvard Think Tank search, we can we find the think tank search. The this librarian at Harvard created a custom Google search that only searches the websites of think tanks, and we can try our search here. So we can do um, mar uh, maritime security policy and hormones, and see what happens. So. Um, all right, so here we have Carnegie Europe, Collective Security in the Persian Gulf. Um, so this think tank, uh, and then we have the Council on Foreign Relations talking about it, this from 2019. Um, this one is, I'm not sure, but it's from the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Um, so there's a bunch of sort of interesting sources in here. Let's take a look here at this one from a, a little more than a year ago. Um, the other thing that you can see by looking at think tank um, publications uh, is you can look at these authors who may have maybe really like knee deep in this subject matter. Um, and so this person may be someone to watch. His research focuses on foreign and security policy in particular regarding Iran and the P Persian Gulf. Um, and you can see here often they'll list their other publications that they've written. Um, and so they can be, uh, that can be a useful search strategy as well. So um, this is Harvard Think Tank search again. Um, the Atlantic Council, the, uh, this, is, this is probably going to be discussing like the issues, which you're probably familiar with already, Iman having um, taken a look at this for a while. Um, and you can change the sort by, right now it's relevance. If we changed it to date, um, we may find that we have less relevant results, but they're more recent. It may be worth going through to see if this is Hara, helpful. Hara, um, does RefWorks uh, work with this database too? That's a great question. No, it does not. 
um, except it does it does to some extent. These are all web pages, basically. Um, so what RefWorks does, so let's say we were interested in this one, for example. Um, RefWorks has a tool. So if I'm in RefWorks right now, I, I clicked over to RefWorks. There's a tool right here under tools. Uh, you have to click tools again. And there's a tool called Save to RefWorks. Um, what happens is you click on it and you, you drag the button to your, uh, your favorites bar. So if I, I've done that, I have my Save to RefWorks button. And if I go to my article and I click Save to RefWorks, it tries to find all the information from the article um, and it, you can save it to RefWorks. It may have, it, it only uses the data the web page gives you and sometimes it's poor and sometimes it's good. So in this case, it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to save to RefWorks and put it in, I'll just put it, uh, I'll put it in my INR folder just for fun. And um, it, uh, it saves it in there for you. So actually I, I lied, it does let you do that. So save to RefWorks is basically a tool for web pages that you can install okay. on your browser. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good, but sometimes it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, that's not really, that's not a problem either because RefWorks offers you an option to, on this little plus sign, add, uh, create a new reference from scratch. And sometimes it's necessary to do that. So you would click on add, create new reference and choose the type of work it, it is. So if it was um, a report from a think tank, for example, you just copy and paste all the inf information in there and click save um, and then choose where you want it to go. It'll show up over here. Uh, it'll tell you where to go. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and actually, there was one more um, tool that I wanted to show you, um, which may be useful, especially if people from INR are looking at this, um, or people who are doing uh, humanities majors, uh, humanities uh, dissertations, um, who are delving into subject matter like this. This is Google Advanced Search. So I'm going to Google Google Advanced Search. And Google Advanced Search is great. Um, okay, Google Advanced Search is great for looking through a particular lens. So in this case, it allows you to choose, and I like using the site or domain field in Google Advanced Search. So one of my favorites is .mil, which searches only military sites. And so .mil is an interesting domain because it's mostly geared to military professionals and um, people who are sort of affiliated with that, contractors and so on. So if I click, um, if I enter search terms, uh, maritime security and hormones here, it's searching only .mil, um, domains so um different uh different mil um websites army navy um and and often you'll find defense technical information center um these are often this is an old one but these are uh d dissertations or master's theses um, and so this can be a really great way to see sort of what the military is thinking about maritime policy and, and security in the Strait of Hormuz um, or whatever on your topic. Um, another thing that Google Advanced Search can be useful for is if you do read another language and like you want to hear what um, Iran, for example, thinks about this, you would do... Um, I have to look for the um, the domain, country level domain, country level domain for Iran. I just use this Wikipedia page. I'll go down here and see if I can find, I'm gonna do control F for Iran. Um, and it's .ir. So I'll go back. And the other thing I like to do is um, sometimes I go to Google Translate uh, 
and I'm going to put my search terms in there. Let's see, Strait of Hormuz policy piracy. Um, and I'm going to do, I'm going to translate from um, English to um, to Persian. It might be Farsi. Farsi? Either Farsi or Persian. Yeah, I don't know which one we're going to find. Yeah, let's see if we can. I'm going to look. I'm going to make this smaller so I can see more. Um, did you see me pass it? It should be in there. Farsi. Can I do? Huh. That would be weird if it's not in there and I would be like pretty surprised. Pashto Persian. Okay, I'm going to try that. And then I'm going to do this and it gives me this, um, the Persian for my search terms. Yeah, and, then, and that's, that's, that's pretty accurate. Is it? Because sometimes yeah. it could be, it could be pretty bad. <laughs> it says, well, you know, yeah, it says, so it's, instead of policy, it kind of says like politics, but it's, it's, it's very close. Okay, and you, if you speak Persian, then you would probably have a closer translation that you could type in here. Um, but I'm going to do dot IR and then I can do um, my search terms in Google advanced search. And then I'm going to do advanced search. And then we get now the important thing is that if we did English, then obviously it would be from an Iranian website, but for an English audience. But since we're writing it in Persian, it's for a Persian speaking audience. And so one thing I might do is like translate the page because I don't speak Persian and I can, Google will do probably a kind of crazy job. Um, do, you know, it's an AI. So this is the, um, this is how they have translated it for us. Um, and it's a very, it's an interesting uh, search strategy because, um, it, you want to see what different players, uh, you know, what their, what their PR is regarding these different issues. So that again is a, um, a Google, that was a Google advanced search. Um, I did Google, where's my other Google one? But can I ask a question about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, and, and it's actually, I'm so glad you brought this up because I had completely forgot about this because I was going to ask you the last time. So let's say I do find an article that's like completely in Persian, right? And I read the article and I want to incorporate information from that article in my paper. How does citation of that works? Great question. So the first thing I'd say is that um, you are writing for an English speaking audience. So you will need to to translate the uh, the art the article title and citation yes. information for your audience um, okay. that said um you should you may want to check with your faculty member about what their preferences um there may be you know the like at in in different citation tools they may um request that you put or it may be advisable to put a note translated from the and then the language um, so that your reader understands that this is not the exact title. And the purpose of citation is so that your reader can go back and find it uh, themselves. Um, so you may have to do a little more narrative um, in the text when you describe how you, you know, what the source is to let your reader know if you want to go back and read this, you know, um, it's in Persian uh, and or whatever. Um, so there's different different ways. You just have to keep in mind the purpose of citation is for your reader to be able to visit the sources you looked at, and um, it's but it's still a very uh, it can be a key strategy research strategy to look at the you know those languages. Um, I don't know if I answered that exactly. No, you did. Uh, it makes it makes perfect sense, and it's especially explaining what the purpose of citation is it helpful yeah and that that's the key is it's, it's you're always thinking of your reader because it's um and that's how you can answer a question like if you have something like that like a another language source um they may 
you know, I, I'm sure that the process of citation in uh, scholarly articles and different has it it's different across different cultures. Um, but since we are writing for an American audience, you're using whatever citation APA or Chicago or Turabian. Um, and then you're for your reader, you're translating, letting them know that you've translated and um, that this, if they wanted to have the same process, this is how they would go and find it. Um, so you, that's why you would include like the, um, that like, what was it? If we look at this website, it's still, it's in English. I mean, it's in like these, uh, our alphabet. Um, so you can add that, but then actually the end of it isn't in our alphabet. So, um, but I think this would go in as a URL. Um, okay. Interesting. Anyway, you're going to get me all interested in this and I don't want to go down that rabbit hole since <laughs> we're recording this for everybody. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically that's what I wanted to cover. We covered, um, we covered from our, our, uh, I'm going to stop sharing from our, um, our PowerPoint, what I said we were going to cover, we talked about the different search tools. Um, and then we added, because of the subject matter of, of your uh, research, we added Harvard Think Tank and Google Advanced Search with the domain level searching and, um, and talked a bit about citation there. So um, yeah, if you, if, if you kind of forget how to do something that we talked about, that's when you would just contact me or do a chat to the library. Um, and we, we could have a, I could send, we can send little videos or um, set up a consultation. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Did that, did that help with your, did you find a few things that you might be able to apply, you think? Absolutely. This was uh, very, very beneficial. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, it's great. I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad that you were able to attend and we could have such an interesting topic. I, I hope your research is fun. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> I could use some fun writing 200 pages. So. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be so sick of it by the time you're done. But I'm sure it'll be a great contribution. Well, thanks a lot. I hope you have a great day. Reach out if you need anything. Yes, thank you so much. And one last question. When will uh, this recording will be available on, on the homepage? Or oh, yeah, on... great question. Um, where am I going to put this? I think... Um, I will email it to you, but I'm going to think about where else to put it. Okay, that sounds great. All right, thanks All very right, much. Thank you so much. Yeah, have Take a care. Have a, have a good day. Bye bye.